Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you guys about the top 10 most popular Linux distributions in 2018. And for this video, I'm basing the data off of distrowatch.com. They have a page hits ranking per day. So I'm going from the least page hits of the top 10 to the most hits at the number one. So number 10 is OpenSUSE Linux. This is a distribution which has been around pretty much since I can remember. My college IT teacher was a big fan of it. He made us use OpenSUSE while we were learning Linux in the classroom. Uh, but these days it has a rolling release version which is becoming very, very popular with many distributions. So the rolling release version is called Tumbleweed, but they still have the regular traditional release where you have to reinstall if you want to upgrade the version called Leap. The distribution is known for being easy to install and it's also got a good software package manager. As far as the desktops you can install for OpenSUSE, it's got Cinnamon, Gnome, KDE, LXDE, OpenBox, and also a couple I haven't tried yet, IceWM and WMaker. So that brings us to number 9, TrueOS. So TrueOS is based on FreeBSD. It aims to be easy to use with pre-configured sound, video, and desktop environment settings. And it's got a lot of desktop environments available for you to try out, including GNOME Cinnamon, KDE, XFCE, Mate, and many other lesser known ones. Next is Fedora Linux at number 8. It's been popular for a long time. I've always seen it up on the distro watch list. It's currently on version number 27 because it's not only been popular for a long time, but it's been there for a long time. Now, traditionally, when you use Fedora, I think most people go with the GNOME desktop, but it's got many different desktops available to it aside from GNOME as well. And Fedora is often used for server and virtualization instances in addition to just your typical user's desktop. Whenever I've used Fedora with the standard GNOME desktop, I've had a pretty good experience. GNOME is very clean and easy to use, and, but it does look a little bit different than Windows desktops. Though, that said, you can install basically whatever you want on Fedora. It doesn't have to be GNOME. Number seven is Elementary, which is the closest thing to Mac on Linux, pretty much bar none. Uh, the creators of Elementary have created a Pantheon desktop, that that's its name. And going along with that are many applications custom built for Elementary OS, which are meant to look as close to Mac as possible, which generally means it's going to be easy for most people to use, a friendly interface, a clean look. So if you really wanted a Mac but didn't want to shell out the cash for it, Elementary OS would be a pretty decent alternative. Number six is Antergos OS, which is a Arch-based system, which means it's going to have a rolling release. Generally, systems built on Arch are lightweight. For Linux users who have been around for a while, Antergos was previously known as Synarch, and one of the advantages of Antergos over Classic Arch is that it has a GUI installer, which makes it very easy to install. Antergos supports the desktop environments Cinnamon, Gnome, KDE, Mate, Openbox and XFCE, so you've got most of the major ones up there. So next up at number 5 is Solus, which I just checked out the other day on my channel and did a first impressions video of it because it's pretty much the fastest growing Linux distribution in terms of popularity. It's got a rolling distribution which means you install it once and anything else, even the core system updates, can be patched through just by downloading them. You don't need to recreate a USB and reinstall it. But as many rolling distribution Linux versions have, it doesn't actually run on Arch. It's got its own package manager, currently called EOPKG Manager in the terminal. Uh, though I did read that they were going to be renaming that to SOL, reflecting the name of the Linux distribution, Solus. The downside of this kind of more custom package manager is that it's not used in other distributions, so if you are new to Solus, there's going to be a slight learning curve, especially with getting the terminal commands going. However, Solus has a great settings menu and a very good desktop design. I find it to be very easy to use and clean, and it has the options that I'm looking for. That would be stuff like adding extra panels to the side of the screen and changing from a dark theme to a light theme with one button clicks. The base desktop for Solus is Budgie, but it also supports GNOME and Mate desktops. Next up at number 4 is Ubuntu, which is a solid, easy-to-use distribution. As far as I can remember, I think it was the first Linux distribution I actually used. It's Debian-based, 
And they do offer professional support because one of the things the Ubuntu team is big on is having dev servers set up. So if you use products like Amazon Web Services or DigitalOcean, there's a good chance that you might have run into an Ubuntu-based server before. Ubuntu uses the Unity desktop, but they do also have a GNOME version. And I'm pretty sure Unity is somehow related to GNOME, like based off of it or something like that, because they look incredibly similar. I'm not 100% sure, but that's just what it looks like to me. At number three is Debian, which is a Linux distribution which many other distributions like Ubuntu are actually based on, because Debian is known for having very good stability. One of the best advantages to using Debian is that a tremendous amount of desktop environments actually are supported by Debian. So you've got Cinnamon, KDE, Mate, Openbox, and all kinds of lesser heard ones. And for developers who release Linux apps, many are actually released as a .deb package, that's a .debian package. You could also install that on Ubuntu and similar systems because they're based on Debian. Because Debian and Debian-based systems are very popular, they tend to get a lot of support, which is going to be good for the typical user who wants to follow someone else's guide to getting things working, rather than messing with things for hours and hours on their own. So next up at number two is Manjaro, which is pretty much my overall favorite Linux distribution at the moment. It's Arch-based, which means rolling distribution, has Pac-Man out of the box, and you can easily install the Yaur package manager uh, to get many user-created installer scripts. Makes it very easy to install things like Spotify, by the way. Overall, Manjaro is easy to install, looks good, and has an easy-to-use UI. Some of the many desktop environments supported on Manjaro include Budgie, Cinnamon, Deepin, and KDE Plasma. For the record, Manjaro was actually lower on the list when I did a similar video about a year, year and a half ago, so people really seem to be taking a liking to Manjaro. Because, to be honest, it's really good. And that brings us to number one, Linux Mint, pretty much the atypical easy-to-use Linux distribution. Just like Ubuntu, it's also Debian-based, so you get a very solid system when you install Linux Mint. And it's got a very good out-of-the-box experience. A lot of the tools and apps that you are probably going to install anyway are going to be installed out-of-the-box with Linux Mint. So it's very easy to get going with Linux Mint, and that's one of the main reasons it's so popular. Because it's also Debian-based, you're going to get very good software compatibility with Linux Mint. Often, when people make apps, they're going to be testing systems like Mint, Debian, Ubuntu before they worry about many of the other lesser-known distributions. As far as desktop environments go, it's got Cinnamon, Gnome, KDE, Mate, and XFCE desktops, so I would say there's a five of the most popular right up there. And that pretty much brings us to the conclusion. So once again, if you want to check the list out for yourself, go to distrowatch.com and you can see all the up-to-date page hit rankings for what the most popular Linux distributions are. So that's going to be it for my 2018 list here. I hope I was able to give you a good idea of some Linux distributions you should check out and try running on your system. I've been Chris and we'll see you guys in my future video content.